Paramount Pictures in Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Excellent. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that apes. Not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. A listener named Bill writes in from Los Angeles. He says, hi, Tom. I've been a regular listener for over three years here in L.A., I live my life strictly by the rules of like is 101. I bang them and toss them to the curb. At times, I have found myself starting to feel bad for using women just for sex, especially after I've paid zero dollars to get laid. I get to thinking. I am so selfish that I place so much value on money and zero value on women. Is money that important, or should I take her word that it isn't? Love is. Luckily, I bring myself out of it just in time. I just can't help it. Deep down inside, I have the gut feeling that all bitches are liars. I wanted to find out truly what women think about money versus love. The best way to find this out was to see what they thought about money when the roles were reversed. When bitches have more money and more to lose in a marriage. According to a women's financial website, these are the only times a woman should sign a prenup. Otherwise, she should not. It's an excerpt from a book called Suddenly Single, Money Skills for Divorcees and Widows by author Carrie Hannon. So you hear what he's saying here now. Bill is saying, <laughs> I just love this too. Bill is saying that uh, when the rules are reversed and women have more money, suddenly their attitude about a prenup starts to change. So here's the excerpt from the book, Suddenly Single, by Carrie Hannon. Who needs a prenup, it says. And then it's bullet points. Who needs a prenup? A woman who is bringing in a lot of assets to the partnership. $100,000 and up. A woman who has children from a prior marriage. A woman who owns her own business or is a partner in a company. A woman on a fast career path who is likely to earn a hefty salary. And a woman who is paying for her spouse to get an advanced degree. Bill says all these bullet points are exactly what I say when helping men stay on top of their game. Bill goes on to say, according to the article, it also tells women, if the man you want to marry is unwilling to sign a prenup, you should probably take some time to think things through. But, says Bill, I thought money wasn't important and it was all about love. The article further tells women, quote, Most financial advisors argue that mingling assets by including your new husband on the title of your house or adding his name to your investments can lead to nothing but trouble, particularly if the man has fewer assets than you. To ensure that your hard-earned financial stability holds firm, it's advisable to sign a prenup. That's the quote. Bill says, you are always so effing right. These bitches just want to keep us stupid and in the dark so they can take our money. Come to think of it, I don't feel bad about using women for sex. I feel great. Thanks, Tom, for keeping leading us out of the darkness. 
<laughs> now, why don't we, uh, I'll take exactly what I just read to you. Let's put the male gender in there instead. Because all you boys who call in like lovesick little puppies, you know, maybe you need to hear this. Let's uh, take that exact content and change genders. Who needs a prenup? A man who is bringing a lot of assets to the partnership, $100,000 and up. A man who has children from a prior marriage. A man who owns his own business or is a partner in a company. A man on a fast career path who is likely to earn a hefty salary. And a man who is paying for his spouse to get an advanced degree. If the woman you want to marry is unwilling to sign an agreement, then you should probably take some time to think things through. Most financial advisors argue that mingling assets by including your new wife on the title of your house or adding her name to your investments can lead to nothing but trouble, particularly if the woman has fewer assets than you. To ensure that your hard-earned financial stability holds firm, it's advisable to sign a prenup. Now, you know what's interesting about all of this? This content is exactly right. I don't dispute one thing the person said. But it's not just true for women, it's also true for men, and there's nothing sexist about saying so. Men need to sign a prenup to keep women from owning their houses, or owning parts of their businesses, or owning their money. Men need prenups. Isn't it interesting how women are perfectly fine with prenups as long as they have more assets than the men they're with? You know, the, the same the same gender that goes around telling us that it's unromantic to talk about a, a prenuptial agreement has no problem with it when the, when the roles are reversed, when the woman has more money. Everybody who is married, everybody who gets married needs a prenuptial agreement. And that includes the people who have nothing today because just because you don't have anything today doesn't mean you won't uh, down the line. Let me tell you something. When I first got married at 18, I had zip. I had nothing. And today I'm a multimillionaire. And when I was 18, I didn't know I was going to be a multimillionaire. I had no idea I could pull that off. Imagine if I stayed married for all that time and became a multimillionaire and then got divorced. Imagine how much I'd have to pay. Outrageous. You cannot get married without a prenuptial agreement. You can't do it. And women are hypocrites when it comes to prenups. Just like women are hypocrites when it comes to child support. You hear the women calling in here saying, Tom, I agree with you about child support. These are women who are now dating guys who have kids by other women, and they are seeing how unfair it is because they, they get to see how, how the male half lives. And it just really pisses me off. You can't get married without a prenuptial agreement. You cannot do it. And you will see that no matter how much a woman tells you it's unromantic to sign a prenup, if a woman had more money than you did, she wouldn't be saying that. She'd be uh, spouting all the stuff out of this book. You think about that. Tom, Tom, Tom. Nipples. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> You're unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show. one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. It's Ed on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hi, Dad. How are you? Doing okay, son. Hi, I guess uh, my story is that uh, I've been listening to you for a while, and uh, my friends and I purchased some land out of state. We purchased, I guess, uh, some small apartment buildings, and I told them that... Uh, since we're all single, we have to have an agreement that uh, if any one of us gets married without a prenuptial agreement, that we have to well, forfeit our rights to the property and that the other partners would have to buy them out. Love it. Okay. 
Yeah, because uh, the reasoning is that I don't want someone else's personal life to have an effect on my investment and vice versa. So uh, that's just what we did. Yeah, you don't suddenly want new partners you uh, never met before. Exactly. I don't want anyone that didn't invest any time, money, energy, and all they had to do is sign their name on a dotted line, and then they're automatically my business partner when that wasn't the plan from the start. So uh, just wanted to tell you that. <laughs> well, right? but, uh, I'm glad. you know, I heard, uh, that I was reading the Wall Street Journal the other day, as a matter of fact, and I read now that there are law firms or the professional uh, companies that are forbidding partnerships unless you have a prenuptial agreement. You cannot become a partner at certain law firms unless you have a prenup. Really? So that you don't get somebody's ex-wife as one of your partners. And, and my friends realize that like, some of them are in relationships now, and they basically said, told that to their girlfriends that they agreed to this contract, and uh, they don't have a choice. If they end up getting married, it's a prenup or it's not going to happen. So you did these guys a favor. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like I did them a favor, they did me a favor, so... Uh, I mean, they have to open their eyes, but it's not just about what they say love. I mean, it's a legally binding contract. It's, it's a business transaction. That's right. Whether they want to admit to it or not. That's yeah. exactly what the law is. And also I told them that you're better off setting up the terms of your marriage on your terms, not some politicians and some state legislature telling you what you have to do or how your marriage is going to be. It's like, oh, you set your own terms. And I think people that have prenups, are completely honest about everything. They have put everything on the table instead of just lying to each other. Well, they're forced to do that. Yeah. And I think yeah. it's great. Yeah, so I'm a big advocate of uh, uh, prenups. And actually, just to, I don't want to get off topic, but I'm going to send you a T-shirt. I just had it made. It's called, it says, like us or hate us, but you still want us. <laughs> there you go, baby. Thanks a lot for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Victor. Hello. What's up, Tom? First time, long time. I'm doing okay, Victor. Uh, my brother got me into the show. I just say you're the father I never had, and uh, just got back from Iraq, and that's when I just started listening to you. I'm, I'm glad to have you. And uh, I'm going through situations. I totally agree on the fact of the prenuptial agreement. Uh, but I'm married myself. Uh, I'm 22. Oh, and you. uh, I can't me. win the conversation. I know. I can't win the conversation. But... Uh, Seems like uh, you make me feel better every time I listen to you. But I don't have I don't have a prenuptial. Uh, never thought about it. Just for the simple fact that I heard you say earlier that uh, you were 18 and you didn't have nothing. And uh, I'm 22, but when I was 18, I didn't have nothing, and that's why I didn't think. Uh, yeah, but I, when I, with the point I was trying to make, I was saying, imagine if I had stayed married. <laughs> How much would I have had to pay? Yeah, millions and millions of dollars. And when I was 18, I had no idea. I, would, I, I had no idea I could make $100,000 a year. That's true. I'm on the right track. I'm on the right track. I just got accepted to college. I got two more years left. Uh, business management. I want to get into management. Yeah, but uh, she's so on the right track, too, because everything you make, she's going to get half. And on top of that, I see her on the screen that she's a former single mother, and that means you've taken the kid in with you. And that means somehow you're going to be held responsible if the marriage doesn't work out. Uh, yeah. You know, and uh, my brother, uh, my brother was telling me about you, uh, that you were talking about how, you know, I could talk to some lawyers and uh, some professionals and make it seem like I was never married at all. You know, I'm not really thinking about it, but, man, you know, I'm depressed, and every time I drive back from work, I listen to you, and you make me happy, so you're some sort of medication. And, uh. That's what I you know. am. <laughs> and, uh, like, make it seem like I was never married at all. I forgot. What well, uh, yeah, the point is you have to be married less than a certain period of time. How long have you been married? Uh, for about a year, a little bit over a year. I died. You, I don't know what the law is in California, but, uh, you know, some states it's up to two years, some states it's only six months where you can uh, get an annulment. Yeah, an annulment, that's the thing. That's yeah, but, and, and you know about the alimony thing, and you know, I know you're real strict about getting married, and especially single mothers, you know, I messed up, I know. But uh, she she refuses to get a job. I'm sure. And that I, way, when I, you get I divorced, they're going to say, well, she became accustomed to a certain lifestyle. 
and, 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 and as a one-on-one student, I know that's a red flag. Oh, it, because, it, it's uh, a big red flag. Well, she, she had a job when, when I met her. Uh, now she doesn't for some reason. Did she uh, leave her job before you got married? Uh, yes. Um, you, you see right there, if you had called me at that time, I would have said it's time for you to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. Damn. Well, man. And you were saying now you're not that happy. Yeah, I know. And she's a lot older than me, too. I'm, I'm only... She's older than me. How old is know. she? She is... 30? About five years older than me. Oh, you don't even know how old she is. No, she's five years older than me. So she's 27. Yeah. And you're 22. Yes. All right. And uh, I already got a degree. Uh, and I want more. And uh, I'm. But, but wait a minute. Well, why are you still married? Yeah. Man. I don't know. I just. I, she, she, we're going through rough times right now. She she yells at me every day. She gives me the silent treatment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm just too caught up in working. And I'm too working. I have no time to... Uh, yeah, but do you know how caught up you're going to be in working when you get a divorce and you have to pay her alimony and maybe even child support? The kid's not mine. Pal. Have you, uh, you are new to the show. Do you understand if, if you, that kid moves in with you? And you spend holidays with him, and you take him out, teach him how to play catch and things like that. It's entirely possible a judge will say, even though you're not the father, you have acted in the role of a parent, and therefore you owe money. Yep, they already live with me in my house. Well, that, that's why you need to take care of this as soon as possible. Yeah. Uh. The longer they live with you, the more likely it is you're going to get dinged. Yeah. Right. I totally agree with you. But that means you have to. About it. You have to do something about it, right? And I'm still young, you know. I'm, I'm going to get out, and, 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 and it's like I'm already getting to the point where I need to work full time when I get out, and I'm already thinking about not finishing my two years of college, and I, and, I, and, and I'm the type of man that no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. But it seems like I have to. Well, and, you and, wouldn't have to if you were living alone. Exactly. Do you understand? Yeah. That kid is some other man's responsibility, not yours. Yeah, I remember. Uh, I remember a couple of months ago, Tom, you were talking about, and this is true to all the listeners out there. This is true. When you brought brought the point where, when you walk home, you you wouldn't, you can't, you wouldn't want to imagine the feeling of when you walk home and you see a, see, and you see a kid that's not yours, but it looks like. The man that your wife used to have sex with. <laughs> I feel that, Tom. Um, and, and I love the kid. I love kids. Just like you love your nephew. I love kids to death. But, you know, ever since you, you hit that, you, you hit that right on, you know, I'm not blaming you for thinking, making me think that way, but I thought that way before I even started listening to you. And it's like you read my mind. And uh, to all the listeners out there, it's a true thing with single mothers, especially when, uh, you know, you actually see the guy around and you're just like, oh, my God, what did I get myself into? And yeah. you just... Well, you got yourself into it before you got deployed. Yeah, exactly, yep. Yeah. And now she's served her purpose now that you're not deployed anymore. So it's yeah. time to go. Yep. Yeah. Time to go. I agree with you, Tom. So get it done, Victor. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. His father never had, and uh, take me out with a bong hit and Kobe style, please. Here you go, Victor. This is about us. She's so special to me. It yeah, beats in my heart. Yeah, the air I breathe. She's so special to me. It's Shannon on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. 
Hi. I'm getting married in October, and I want to get a prenup, uh, but not because of money, even though I make a lot more money than him. But I wonder, I know you're not a lawyer, but do you know if you can put things in prenups, such as like drug use and alcohol use and things like that? People do. So you can do that. It doesn't have to be all about Well, again, money. I'm not a lawyer, but the thing you can't put in, well, you can put it, you can put anything in it, but it just, certain things are not enforceable. For example, you could not put in a you could put in a prenup, but it won't be enforceable. That you you could say uh, there'll be no children in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Then you get pregnant. You say I'm having the baby, and he says, "Well, the prenup says you can't have the baby. That's not enforceable." Okay, but what if you were to put in something like um, if you were to lose your job or uh, get arrested because of drug use or alcohol use or something like that? Dear, let me ask you. Let me ask you. I know what you're going to ask. You know what I'm going to ask you, dear. You don't. You don't need a prenuptial agreement. You need a good talking to. That's what you need. (laughs) Well, you know, as far as I know, there's been no drugs or anything involved for several years. But I know when he was younger, he did do drugs. So you don't trust him. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I guess a little bit. Not a little bit. <laughs> you don't trust yeah. him. Yeah, I mean, I guess because when we, a few years ago, like three years ago, when we first got together, he was like, I I, I know he had been recently doing drugs before that, and supposedly he stopped doing them because supposedly. he knew that it bothered me. Supposedly. And I, I, I believe that he has. But I know because women. You know why? Because women like love to believe. Out. Women love to believe that uh, their magic vagina is going to make a an alcoholic uh, sober. It's going to make a drug addict clean, and, and but women love to believe that. But that doesn't mean it's true. What it means is you probably drove them underground. Yeah. I mean, okay. the thing is, you shouldn't be getting involved with a drug addict. If drugs offend you, you should not be getting involved with a drug addict. Yeah, I don't know if he's a drug addict, but I know he's a, an occasional drug user. What kind of drugs? Well, I think now it's mostly just no. what, what uh, was it? stuff like that. What was it? Um, I know he had been, I, I don't know much about drugs at all, but I think it was speed. You don't even know he, what he was using? Well... I know it was something that it was some something like speed, but I don't know what the difference between that is and what tweakers do. As That's something. crystal meth. <laughs> he was doing he was doing crystal meth. I, I don't know. I, I That's what tweakers that do. It. Okay. Well I know that the people he hung around with were tweakers, but he said speed, so I don't know if there's a difference or not. But speed's an over encompassing term that encompasses a bunch of different drugs that all do a lot of the same things. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, I, he said that he didn't do it on a regular basis, but I know a lot of his friends were into that. And where he used to live, there were a lot of people who but were... Doesn't that, why, that. doesn't that trouble you? Forget whether yeah, he's doing drugs. <laughs> then why would, you, why would you get involved with somebody like that? It's, it's a hard situation because it's somebody I've known for a really long time. I don't care. <laughs> I, you know, there's plenty of people I've known for a long time. If they're tweakers... I'm not going to say I love you, but first, stop hanging out with your tweaker friends. But I don't, I don't think he's a tweaker. I think maybe just his friends are. Well, I know you'd like to believe that. And he doesn't talk to them really anymore. As far I mean, as you he know, sees them like once a month or something. Oh, he only sees them once a month. If that. <laughs> yeah, and are they tweaking? I don't. think You don't so, even but know. I know. I'm not there. <laughs> and you're not there. Do you hang out with them? Do you know anything about them? No. Don't you find that troubling? Well, I mean, they're his friends. I don't... That's really not the point. <laughs> when you get married, everybody is everybody's friends, right? Yeah, but like I said, he doesn't really hang out with them anymore. He hangs out with them once a month, and you are excluded. Yeah. On well, purpose. I, I, do you think it's on purpose? Of it's course. Not like I, if I can go or anything. Wouldn't you want to meet all his friends before you marry him? met them i just i mean i have my friends and he has his friends and it doesn't mean you don't meet the friends doesn't mean you don't socialize with the friends i don't socialize with them really why not because all they do is go out and tweak that's why there's no social guys (laughs) they're single guys who they're single tweakers 
I don't, I, I guess. I, I don't know if they are or they're not anymore. But you see, the I bottom line here is you, you, you don't trust him. Yeah. I mean, every day I trust him more, but I do think uh, about well, it and it does worry me. You don't I trust him enough to be getting like married? Sister. What's that? You don't trust him enough to be marrying him. Well, I trust him. I just don't trust people in general when it comes to stuff. Like my sister married an re- uh, alcoholic who had been recovered for years. So this this is so this is a trait guy, so. in the family. What's that? So this is a trait in the family, marrying a chemical abuser. Uh, was there any chemical abuse in your immediate family? No, not at all. Like, my parents don't even drink or anything. And what I a- think that's what scares me so much is even, like, pot and stuff like that really, really bothers me just because I don't know anybody who does that. And my parents, you know, are always told me it was wrong, and I've never done it, and it just freaks me out. How in the world did you fall in love with somebody like that? Because I knew him before all of this. No, like, you thought you knew him before all of this. He could very well have been doing it all at that time, too. I, uh, no, I'm talking like 12 years ago. That doesn't mean you don't know. You didn't know he was tweaking. You found out later. Well, that's because I didn't talk to him for like nine years. <laughs> but there. I don't think he is now. I really don't. Okay, I fine. Think now, if anything, it's just like pot and closet smoking. <laughs> right, but uh, of course. But yet, you still want to put it in the prenup because you don't trust him. So, okay. <laughs> So I was calling about... Yes, put it in the prenup, but uh, but you really need to think about whether you should be getting married is what you need to be doing. Yeah. That's why prenups are good, because they make you actually confront issues like yeah, this. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if I were to bring it up to him and show him a prenup, I think he'd probably not be too pleased about it. But. And even then, how would you prove he was tweaking or whatever he was doing? Well, that's why I was thinking if I could tie it to... Something that was like if he got arrested for something or lost a job or couldn't get a job because he failed a drug test or something like that. What if he got arrested for a DUI? Or something like that, right. Oh, so you would divorce him if he got a DUI? Well, I don't know how prenups work. I mean, do you have to act act on them or are they, I wouldn't, I don't think, I wouldn't divorce him if he got a DUI, but I mean, I would want to have that option (laughs) or or at least. Well, you have that option. You don't need to put it in a prenup. Yeah, that's true. You have that option. So it's you have the of option like of leaving now. Well, the point is, if you what were going to put it in, you would you would probably need to ask for some kind of concession in return, not just a divorce. You would probably need to say something like, "I get ten thousand dollars, or I get a uh, hundred thousand, I get the or house, I and you get out." Take my four hundred one k if he does something bad. <laughs> uh, well, as an example, or, by the way, dear, in a prenup, you can uh, say right from the beginning he doesn't get your four hundred one k. Right. Okay. Whether yeah. or not he's a tweaker. Yeah. Okay. But, so it doesn't but, really even but, matter to say anything. Dear, that. if I were you and I felt the way you do, I would not be getting married. Okay, Tom. Thank you. Before I let you go, darling, let me get oh, Carrie no, on. You're going to have somebody say something to me, aren't Yes. You? <laughs> Carrie, what did you want to say to Shannon? Okay, Shannon, and I I, got to say this from the bottom of my heart, not to be disrespectful to you at all, but if you are getting involved with somebody that you already do not trust because you're asking questions about putting it in a prenup, don't marry him. I am in a marriage right now that I wish I had heard of Tom a couple months before I got married. I wouldn't have done it, but... Guys don't change. You can't change them. They can only change themselves. And if once a cheater, always a cheater. Once a tweaker, always a tweaker. Yeah. That's why, you know, they say recovering alcoholics are recovering because they are never recovered. They can always relapse. Yeah. So just don't set yourself up for that. I mean... There's plenty of guys out there if that's what you're going for. Otherwise, you can also be happy by yourself and just dating who you want to date. Come and go as you please. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I definitely think you're doing a good job that if you are going to marry him, I, I, which I highly disagree with, you know, at least you're thinking about the prenup. Protect yourself on that. But really, I wouldn't set yourself up for that heartbreak because, you know, Maybe he won't. Maybe he will, you know? Yeah. 
So All right. thanks. You're welcome. All right, Good Shannon, thanks. Carrie, thank you for the calls. Appreciate it. <laughs> Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Women go into a relationship and get upset because the man isn't fulfilling the fairy tale romance. Yeah. But they're not interested in fulfilling the other side of the fairy tale romance. That's right. Barefoot, pregnant, fellatio well, on demand. The Tom Likas Show. Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Talking about a letter from a listener. Pointing out, rightly so, women have a problem with prenups unless they themselves have more assets than the guys they're marrying. Now you've got these books telling women who have money don't... Don't get married without a prenup. Don't do it. Isn't that interesting? I thought it wasn't romantic to have a prenup. David, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Thank you, Tom. Um, like I just told the guy on the phone there, um, I don't understand why people get married, Tom. Maybe you can help me out. I'm 29. I've had the talk with my girlfriend. And I'd like to know from anybody out there what changes in the dynamic of a relationship two weeks after the wedding. Okay, you've gone through a big ceremony. You've spent a lot of money. You invite everybody over. You had a big meal, lots of booze. Great. You still can't cheat on each other. The reason why you got married is because you've proven to each other over a span of time now that you love each other and you're not cheating. You, like the last woman, had a problem with. You obviously trust the person you're about to get married with. So what's the point of getting married? Why can't, if you're happy, just stay the way you are? Why do we... What I don't understand, Tom, is why people, okay, they've been dating or whatever for a while. They feel like they need something more. They need to, I mean, if you're going to have kids and start a family and all that good stuff, then fine, great. If you're accountants and you want to share the benefits of being, you know, whatever, then great, whatever. But all the people that are calling in with problems, and especially this, like the gal that just called, has the uh, problem with the prenup and, and wants to know how to get around a problem she has with the guy, well, if if there's a problem with somebody, whether you're, whether you're dating or you're married or, or whatever, it's the problem's not going to go away. So what I, what I, my biggest question to you, Tom, because you've heard and you've been married several times, you've heard everybody talk about every problem manageable, you know, imaginable. Why, Tom? Why do people get married? Because women want uh, lovely parting gifts. Uh, if the marriage doesn't work out, they want half of everything you've earned. Well, I mean, like I said, if, they, if you've been in a relationship for a while, and I, I've had this conversation with actually a lot of friends who, who just can't stop cheating. They just. You know, they date one girl for a couple of weeks, and they're already on to the next one before the first one was over. And I, and I said, you know, obviously, okay, you guys got to get that out of your system. That's fine. When you're when you're done sleeping around, you're done, you know, dating everybody you can think of, and you're ready to get serious. Okay, you'll you'll date one girl for a while. Well, once a person has reached that point and they're and they're done, whatever, tasting all the fruit, so to speak, then why why do we need to change things? What why do you, why does a girl need proof from a guy? Hey, you want to you want to share a lifestyle? Great. You're a professional. It's not a matter of proof, it's a matter of guaranteeing her money if things don't work out. <laughs> well, I think that I, I think the world would be a, a I'm sorry, I hate to say something so deep, but I think things would be a lot simpler if if people if people could really find a real reason to do something like that, to get married, to have a ceremony that had something other than to do with... Men get married because women harangue and harass us to get married. Yes. Hey, you know what? I'm I'm sort of in it right now. I'm, I'm a student, and I I tell her that, look, the, the program I'm in is very, very tough, and you got to get through it with me, and if we make it through together, then, okay, we'll talk. We'll make out our... We'll sit down, have a plan together, and we'll work it out. But... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm dealing with that, and I, I, I constantly tell her, tell me, other than, you know, now we have a, a band of gold around our fingers and, you know, we share a checking account. I mean, a lot of married people won't even do that. But, I mean, you know, if you start sharing things like whatever, tell me, really, a couple weeks after a wedding is over and all that, and you finally did it, you spent twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on a wedding. What's different? You still, you didn't want to cheat on your, each other before. Here's what's different. Now, if you divorce her, you have to give her half of everything you make. Right. Well, uh, Okay, I, I mean, that's common sense. I mean, that, that, that almost makes us a rhetorical question. Common sense is, yes, people, women do that. Women do that because they want to have that. But, there, Tom, there are men out there 
they really need to go find a wife. Oh, I just I gotta go find someone. Because Why? well, they're because they're because Why? they're stupid and they don't realize what they're doing is bad for them. The benefits of marriage go to women and children, but not to men. Bottom line. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Allison on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I can't believe I'm calling you. <laughs> really? I Neither can I. For a long time. I always thought that. Well, I'm currently I'm married. I always thought that I my our marriage is different. Why right, you, you had the magic life? vagina, and you were not going to be like anybody else. You were in love. You were in more love than anybody who'd ever, any two people ever been on this earth. You were the two, you were the magic couple, the perfect couple, the couple yeah, that loved each other very... so much, and you, nothing could break you apart. People didn't understand your love. They didn't get it. They didn't understand it was love, 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 and everybody was saying, come on, it can't be that good. You love birds. Oh, you're kidding me. You're, you're faking it. No, we love each other more than any two human beings who were ever on this planet and our marriage is going to be perfect forever and ever and ever that's what you said isn't it yes i did have a very idealistic view of just marriage. like everybody else i have to admit i recently found out that my husband's been cheating on me isn't that perfect <laughs> and um well they both tell me I, I spoke to the girl also they both tell me it wasn't a sexual relationship what well, was it complete well, that's what they tell me. I don't know what Really? Well, what, well, then was his penis involved? I don't know. They're, they both tell me that it wasn't like that. It was just a emotional thing. Oh, so they didn't have sex. That's what they're telling me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I should believe that. But this woman that, well, I'm in my, um, I'm 26. The woman that he's been cheating on me with is in her late 30s. So? And he wasn't completely honest about the fact that we're married. He told her that we're separated. And this was going on when I was pregnant with our second child. Mm. And I just recently found out. Uh-huh. And on top of that, I found out that he's been going to a massage parlor. And getting a happy ending. How did you find all this out here? Well, you won't believe it. The whole massage parlor story, I found a MapQuest printout. With the same destination. I typed in the number or the address on Google, and it came out to a massage parlor. Uh -huh. All right. The and uh, how did you find out about the affair he's having? So I started this. I knew something was up. I just started harassing him about it. He's been coming home from work very late. It's just been very different for the, for the past couple of weeks. I just sensed it. And eventually all came out. I went through the cell phone bills, and I found out they've been talking almost every day for the past six months. Mm -hmm. We don't have a prenup. And I just have no idea what I'm supposed to do from here. Well, dear, um, do you want to stay with somebody like that? Uh, the thing is, I mean, I trusted him completely. I was just really shocked. It really just, just totally just caught me by surprise. Because you had the perfect relationship. Yeah, and you were in love, love, love. So I guess my question to you is I just need someone to tell it like it is. Why do guys cheat? Is it because I mean, he tells me that he still wants to stay in the marriage and that he loves their children. But why do guys do that? Uh, dear. Are they willing to? First of all, men and mind? women cheat. Let's start with that. Okay. Men and women cheat. It's not just men. You have to be a victim of a man cheating. Okay. But I talk to these guys all the time. They want to have life at home. They want to have mommy making them dinner and doing their clothes, clothes for them and stuff. And they want to have some hot uh, strange on the side. Okay. <laughs> when you become a mommy, you become their mommy too. No, I understand, yeah. That's why. And they just have a fat pregnant person sitting at home. And right. Looking girl that they married. It's right. That's right, dear. Well... So I guess my point is now he's saying that he really learned from his mistakes. Blah. This never happened. Blah. It was blah. a special thing. What would you say? I, I mean, if he asked him to massage parlor, would you say that there was? I'd be out. Thing? I would be. I would be out. You'll be out. I would be out of that marriage. Oh. That's what I would do. I know that's not the answer you wanted. But that's what I would do, dear. Our email address: tom at blowmeuptom dot com.
The Tom Likas Show. Go ahead, tune in at work. San Diego's Dave and Jeff, weekdays on 1037 Free FM. Goddamn mother son of a bitch, stuck in traffic again. There's a little bit of trouble trying to get into Santee right now on the 52, just after Santo Road. There's a crash off to the right shoulder before the summit. Southbound 5 on the ramp to Main Street got an accident that it's also been moved off to the right shoulder. And on the north side of the 5 at the 8, got a crash with three vehicles involved. They're moving that out of lanes right now, too. Thinking about buying a home? Interest rates are low and home choices are abundant. Every market's different. Call a Realtor, a member of the National Association of Realtors. I'm Liza Lake. More like is coming up. 1037 Free FM, San Diego's FM Talk Station. San Diego's FM Talk Station. Come talk to me sometime, sweetheart. 1037 Free FM. I was talking to this one guy, and he's like, these illegal aliens, you know, these these people come over here, these immigrants came to this country, and they took everything from me. They came to this country, they took away everything that we have. And I was like, listen, Chief Eagle Feather, you're... <laughs> You're raising some very interesting points, but if you could just shut up and deal, I'm on a bit of a hot streak, so it's a complicated world. But the kids today, the girls, the celebrities, they're too thin. The Paris Hilton, the Lindsay Lohan, they're thin girls. They look like human Pez dispensers, don't they? You pull Lindsay's head back, a little Pez pops right out of her neck. Congress did a bang-up job this year in the middle of uh, the summer. They decided that they had to stop everything and vote on a constitutional amendment to make it against the law to burn a flag. Did I miss something? What was going on this summer? Were people burning flags willy-nilly? Son of a bitch, I'm out of briquettes. Bring me the flag. I'd like a nice skim, no whip latte. Hey, you're the Red Defender, right? Yes. I saw you in the paper. You saved a runaway train. That's right. So shouldn't you be out saving something? I already stopped the bank heist this morning. Evil doesn't take a break. Can I sit down for a second? Hey, dial back the caffeine, man. Saving the world isn't easy. Saving a life is. One pint of blood can save up to three lives. Go to bloodsaves.com. A public service message brought to you by the Ad Council. Want to fight childhood asthma? Then fight it with a scrub brush and a hot soapy towel. Even in the neatest and tidiest homes, if there's so much as a crumb to eat or a drop to drink, household pests like bugs and mice will do all that they can to get it. Creepy crawlies like bugs and mice are unpleasant enough as it is, but they're more than just a nuisance for kids with asthma because they can actually trigger an asthma attack. So give them a whole lot of nothing. Sweep up crumbs, wipe down tables, scrub dishes before they pile up in the sink, and store leftovers in plastic bags or bowls. Don't leave them so much as one tidbit or nibble, and you can stop a childhood asthma attack before it starts. Discover other simple ways to prevent an asthma attack. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS or visit noattacks.org because no child should feel like a fish out of water. A public service message brought to you by the U.S. EPA, the Ad Council, and this station. Father's Day with Dad. And that's right, I'm coming down for Father's Day because uh, I am the dad you never had. And so um, I'm going to visit some of the sons that I never had in San Diego. Here's a quick exercise that will not only get you feeling better, it will save you money, too. Just walk to your HR manager's office and ask if your company's Flexible Spending Account Program, or FSA, is reimbursing for non-prescription drugs. That's right, over-the-counter medicines. You already know and trust them to help you get relief from aches and pains, cold and flu symptoms, allergies, and more. Now, thanks to an IRS change in tax laws, they're eligible expenses in company FSAs. So ask your employer about non-prescription medicines and your Flexible Spending Account today. Presenting Great Moments in FirstGov.gov History. For years, Americans have turned to FirstGov.gov for their government information. 2000. Mrs. Marilyn Gorman takes online government to new heights, applying for Social Security benefits before breakfast. And got them. Okay, who wants pancakes? 2002. In what later became known as the download heard round the world, the Duggans of Wichita print their own passport application.